This is Hainan, where winter brings not just tourists but also agricultural researchers. Among them is soybean expert Dr. Han Tianfu. My baby is one year old. <laughs> He's developed an unusually tall soybean variety and is showing it to his colleague Dr. Felix Docora, who's always thinking how could this be applied in Africa. Me coming from Africa. Uh, the most important question is food security. Why can't we feed ourselves? We have the soil, we have the land. What is the problem? One problem is the lack of research infrastructure. Here in Sanya, Dr. Dakora shows his African students what's possible with China's advanced equipment. Techniques allow you to ask certain fundamental questions. These resources could be a game changer for scientists like this young researcher from Zimbabwe. So if you look at our country, it might take about seven to eight years to have a rice variety. And when you reach that eight years, probably the, the problem that you're breeding for, it won't be relevant at the time. But if you look at China, they have accelerated methods, which means you get your rice variety to address the problem that you have in, short, in a shorter period. So when you get the variety, it will be able to address the problem at the time. These labs are just one of many such facilities at Yajou Bay Science and Technology City. What was once a seasonal winter breeding ground has been transformed into a year-round research hub that's been tasked to become the country's Silicon Valley of seas. Progress made here can increase yield across China and beyond. China and Africa can work together. Can uh, produce soybeans to feed their own people and they export soybean to China. Okay? Now I can get money to reduce poverty. China can get stable and diverse soybean supply. That is a win-win uh, collaboration. In Ghana, CGTN meets Dr. Enoch Seipi, who studied soybean breeding with Professor Han in Sanya. In 2017, I had a Chinese government scholarship to study in China, Chinese Agriculture Academy of Sciences. The reason why I went to Sanya is that Sanya provided an ideal environment to screen genotypes that are adapted to tropical regions like Ghana or in Africa. It was a wonderful experience and it's been helpful, especially setting up food trials and then uh, Food data collection is, is being of help in my oil palm breeding work here in Ghana. Oil palm is one of Ghana's most important cash crop, crucial to rural livelihoods and the national economy. But the equipment gap remains a challenge. In Ghana, in the oil palm research, uh, we lack those facilities. For instance, we don't have a functioning, we don't have a molecular laboratory. In, uh, we don't have funds for most of our research work. So that's the hindrance over here. So most of the work we do here is good work. Back in Sanya, Dr. Takora has a clear-eyed view of what collaboration can and cannot achieve. China them from behind can keep providing support. But it's Africa's cry. It's Africa's problem. African scientists hope that their countries will catch up. And for now, they're investing in the partnership with China, learning the language and planting seeds for long-lasting relationship that start here in Hainan. Chen Mengfei, CGTN, Yazhou.